I, when I was living in London in the late 1960s, I had a friend uh, who was a philosopher, a delightful woman, much missed, but my God, she was obtuse. She had come from the linguistic philosophy uh, tradition in, in England, uh, logical positivism, and she would be horrified. We, she and I used to have late night conversations over a glass of wine, and she would be horrified at the notion that philosophy could have anything to do with lived life. Philosophy was a discipline that one did, one did philosophy, and that was it. Uh, it no, no relevance anywhere else. I didn't know Isaiah Berlin's writing at that time. I wish I did. I could have argued with her much more <laughs> cogently than I did. Uh, what I loved when I discovered Isaiah Berlin uh, was his, as Morris has said, his, what I hate, but his relevance to life, that he refused to regard philosophy as a mere discipline, something that academics did, the philosophers did in the, uh, in the ivory tower. He brought philosophy into the lived world. Um, I, <laughs> I've been reading the book again today. I've been going through it. I was coming up the train from Cork and uh, delighting in, in the pages. And I, I had come, strangely enough, I'd come from uh, giving a little talk to the Philosophy Society in Cork last evening, at which there were um, three girls, as I would say, I suppose they're in their early 20s, but they seem to me to be girls, and there are about five other people. Uh, that's the kind of audience you get for... Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm amazed to see all you people whose faces I do. <laughs> It's a nice thing to be in it. I, usually when I have these things, I recognize all the faces, but you're obviously all philosophers, not, <laughs> not people who care about uh, fiction and art and things like that. Uh, you're, you're people of the mind. Um, Isaiah Berlin has been a great enthusiasm of mine. Uh, I think he is a philosopher absolutely for our time. I hate saying that, as I say, I hate the notion of relevance. But we live in a very strange uh, time, very dangerous time. I'm not so old that I can remember the 1930s, but I suspect that the time we're living through is very like the 1930s, and we know what happened at the end of the 1930s. So we have to be very careful. We have to be very vigilant. We have to follow the example of people like Isaiah Berlin, allow argument, allow dispute, and above all, allow the wonderful delight of thinking, the, light of, the delight of the mind, a page of philosophy, like a page of poetry or a page of fiction or a picture or a piece of music, can be as exciting as, well, <laughs> can be as delight, delightful as sex. Uh, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a, a way of being alive, being alive to the world, being a way of being uh, alive in the world. Johnny's book is, I think, a marvelous, um, a marvelous illumination of Isaiah Berlin's work. Uh, admirable in its humility before the work, but also admirable in its refusal to take the work as gospel. Uh, it's an argument with the work of a great philosopher, and uh, I, <laughs> I don't do book launches, as you see, uh, but I always feel that Kingsley Amos said that uh, the best advertisement would be, buy a Brown's beer, it makes you drunk. Buy his book, read it, it will make you drunk with delight. <laughs> <laughs>